Have you ever, after a long day, had an argument with your partner when you're tired and felt that they are being totally irrational? <laughs> Sounds like a yes. And then, on reflection in the morning, when you're refreshed, have thought, perhaps it was me who was being irrational. <laughs> well, don't worry, you're not alone. It is actually a documented phenomena that when sleep-deprived couples argue, they are more likely to be irrational whilst perceiving their partner to be irrational. We all know the effects of a lack of sleep. We get tired. We want to go to bed. But it's more than that. It affects our ability to make the right decisions, to complete tasks. It changes our mood and our emotions. There is now a huge body of evidence that is linking the lack of sleep with long-term chronic illness. Sleep experts now agree that sleep should be treated along the alongside the trilogy of a healthy lifestyle, next to diet and exercise. But perhaps more importantly, it should be the most important of all of those. Yet it is the one that all of us constantly neglect. We are here today to talk about transformations. Sleep is truly transformative, both on a nightly basis and in the long run. So, I could expand upon the latest scientific evidence and send you all to sleep right now. <laughs> but I thought it would be better if I gave you some sleep tips. But first, a bit of background. What you can see behind me is the sleep cycle for a good sleeper. It lasts about 90 minutes, goes through the three ever-deepening stages of non-REM sleep before the REM stage of sleep. Our circadian rhythm is optimized for seven to eight hours of sleep. And so for a 90 minute cycle like this, for a good sleeper in the second diagram, you will see we would go through four to five state sleep cycles a night. Now we all know that each of these stages performs vital and different functions for our body. Memory and learning consolidation, gut health, toxin removal, and the growth and recovery of the nervous and muscular system. So, if you are on eight hours sleep, great. You're on the path to successful living and a long and healthy life. However, I'm not here to scaremonger you. No, actually I am. <laughs> we all know people who feel great after having an unhealthy meal or feel fantastic because they don't do any exercise. But we know that in the long term, that'll lead to problems. The same goes for sleep. If you're regularly only getting five hours, you are doing so at your own peril. For two million years, we have been led by the sun for our evolutionary routines. Hunting, eating, and then falling asleep approximately two hours or so after sunset. The desire to sleep is brought on by adenosine, which basically builds inside us from the moment we wake until we can't take it anymore. We also have very detailed light sensing proteins that act as the brain's hormonal messenger to start the production of melatonin, which is us getting us ready for sleep. Sleep is our automatic maintenance system. We all know that if you cut the maintenance budget, that's when problems happen. It's like a tower block cleaner, just not bothering to clean the top two floors. So, I'd like to share with you now some sleep tips in this modern day and age where we supposedly have all these techs and apps beside us to help us keep up with the evolutionary changes that the two million years of evolution has brought upon us and we've adapted far too quickly for that. So, my first tip oh, is reducing your room temperature. This is critical for two reasons. <coughs> Firstly, in order to be able to go to sleep, your body temperature needs to drop by one degree Celsius. And secondly, the most common reason for poor sleep is actually temperature in the bedroom. Over the past 50 years, increases in insulation, double glazing, central heating have basically meant that our homes are too hot and our bedrooms are too hot for the purposes that we need them for. So, smart thermostat or not, please go home tonight and try and turn your thermostat down from 21 degrees, and I know that's what you have it at, if not higher, 
and try and aim for 18 degrees. That will feel cold, believe me. You only have to ask my wife. <laughs> but two possible consequences. Firstly, you will be able to fall asleep faster. And more than likely, you will be able to stay asleep for longer. Now, it's true. We don't like the cold. But we don't live in caves anymore, nor drafty medieval castles that have the requirement for a 14 and a half tog feather duvet. <laughs> we need things that are dynamic, that keep you warm when you're cool and cool when you're hot. <coughs> now, our body is designed to do that, so we just have to enable it. So I can tell you that that 14 and a half fe tog feather duvet is completely unthermodynamic. It traps heat in. Try nature's great thermoregulators, wild silk, merino wool, camel down in duvets. I can also tell you that a 600 thread count luxury cotton sheet is totally unbreathable. Lower thread counts are much more breathable. Then you can think about all of the other things that influence temperature in your bedroom. Your pyjamas, your mattress, your bed. My second point, light. Light is bad for sleep. We need dark. So get blackout blinds or an eye mask. But it's more important than that. It's also about the reduction of light and the sun setting. So we know that white light and blue light is bad. Okay, our tablets, our TV screens, white LEDs, they all are emitters of it. But the brain is clever. Okay, if you sit there with your tablet at 10 o'clock at night on full contrast, you're tricking the brain into saying, I'm still awake, I don't want to go to bed. Okay, so you need to set the tone from sunset with the way that you do your light. Which means, if you have dimmers, use them. If you have warm lights, use them. If you have lamps rather than up lights, use them. And if you have filters on your screens, use all of those to bring the light down so that you're ready for sleep. <coughs> Thirdly, keeping your mind and stress levels in check. We're constantly connected. For some, it's work emails. For others, it's social media and Facebook. We need to allow our brains time to unwind at the end of the day. For others, it's the racing mind. Too much to do tomorrow. Anxieties, giving a TED talk tomorrow. <laughs> all of those things, um, all of those things cause us to in some ways, not to be able to switch off. And so what happens is it's very simple for us to uh, solve this with a very simple method. It was invented in 1918 for one of Charles Schwab's companies to try and improve employee productivity, actually. But actually, it works very well for solving the racing mind, especially as we already know that if you're tired, you make irrational decisions. So again. What you can do, grab a piece of paper and a pen before you go to bed tonight and write down the five most important things that you're going to do tomorrow in order. You're giving your brain a plan. And we all love a plan, especially one that we don't have to do till tomorrow. <laughs> then you can put it and yourself to bed, knowing that you have a clearly defined path for tomorrow. Fourthly, the bedroom. It should be your safe haven. You should go upstairs, close the door, and take yourself away from everything. Your sanctuary, where life's worries cannot come in there. In my job as a sleep expert, I literally see hundreds of bedrooms. And compared to Scandinavian and Asian bedrooms, which are very minimalist, most British bedrooms are thoroughly cluttered. Okay. So again, please go home tonight, go upstairs to your room and have a look around. Is it cluttered? Does it make you feel calm and relaxed? Your bedroom should be like your luxury spa. Now, not all spas are the same, but they are all designed with one purpose in mind, and that is to make you calm and relaxed. And so to my final point, which is slightly different for everybody now, I'm going to try something a little bit new here. We're going to try starting our day, not tomorrow, but today. So again, when you go home from here today, when the sun sets and it's time to repair, 
we're going to think about doing everything from tonight that is going to help us for tomorrow. So by setting the lights, writing a plan, reducing the temperature, going up to our room, we are giving ourselves the opportunity to prepare ourselves for a great night's sleep because we all know that how we feel and how we perform tomorrow is dependent on how we sleep tonight. So, a few tips to help you on your way. Caffeine. Don't drink it after lunch. It stays in your body for 12 hours. Eating. Try and finish your last meal at least two hours before you go to bed and don't snack thereafter. Again, coming back to your clever brains, you're tricking your, you don't want to trick your body into thinking that it's time to get up by digesting a heavy meal. And as it says up there, write your plan, reduce the temperature, switch off, unwind, so you can set an alarm to go to bed rather than to wake up. Set that to go upstairs at 10 o'clock, have a shower, relax, get ready, get into bed at half past 10, read, listen to music if you need to, so you can turn your lights out at 7 o'clock and give yourself an opportunity, at 11 o'clock, to give yourself an opportunity to be awake at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. So, please, hopefully armed with some of these tips which will resonate with you, go home today, indulge in your sleep, treat it like a first date, love it, <laughs> and you really will give yourself an opportunity to wake up rested every day. Thank you. <laughs>